good morning, classmates. Good morning, uh, Dean Melo. I am Engineer Atienza. And together with Ms. Mary Grace Hermano, we'll be discussing Chapter 4, Social and Ethical Concerns Relating to Information Systems. Uh, learning Objectives. What political, social, and ethical challenges are brought up by information systems? What specific conduct rules can be utilized to direct moral choices? Why do the internet and modern information systems technology make it harder to safeguard people's privacy and intellectual property? What effects do information systems have on daily life? First is understanding systems related and social issues. In businesses, the information systems department played a significant role on cases of poor moral and legal judgment. The information systems were concealed from the general public in the hopeless belief that it would go undiscovered. What is ethics? Ethics refers to moral standards that people employ to govern their behavior as free moral agents while making decisions. Information systems raise new ethical questions because they create opportunities for intense social change, threatening existing distributions of power, money, rights, and obligations. The relationship between ethical, social, and political issues in an information society. Uh, the political, social, and ethical issues are interconnected. The figure presented illustrates the connections. Introduction of new technology has a ripple effect in the current equilibrium, creating new ethical, social, and political issues that must be dealt with on individual, social, political levels. Both social and political institutions require time before developing new behaviors, rules, and laws. For example, a society as a calm pond, uh, information technology as rock drop in pond, which create ripples of new situations not covered by old rules. The society and political institutions cannot respond overnight to these ripples. It may take years to develop etiquette expectations, loss, which requires understanding of ethics to make choices in legally gray areas. Uh, the five moral dimensions of the information age. First is rights and obligations regarding information. What privacy rights do people and organizations have with regard to one another? What can they safeguard? For example, websites, privacy, spyware, cookies. Second is legal obligations and property rights. In digital culture, where it is hard to track down and account for ownership and when it is simple to ignore such property rights, how can traditional intellectual property rights be protected? For example, trade secret, copyright, and patent law. Third is control and accountability. Who will be held responsible and accountable for the damage done to property rights in individual and collective information. Fourth is system and performance. What requirements for data and system quality should we make in order to safeguard people's rights in the security of society? For example, computer crime, spam, junk mail. Fifth is life quality. What principles ought to be upheld in a society? What values information and knowledge? Which institutions should we defend against abuse? Which cultural beliefs and customs do the new information technology support? For example, is repetitive stress injury, computer vision syndrome. It is an eye strain condition related to computer display screen use. And then techno stress. Key technical trends that present ethical concerns. Information technology came before ethical concerns. However, information technology has increased ethical problems, stressed current social structures, and rendered some laws completely or significantly ineffective. These ethical strains are cased by these major technical trends. Computing power doubles every 18 months. 
More organizations depend on computer system for critical operations. Data storage costs rapidly decline. Organizations can easily maintain detailed databases on individuals. Data analysis advances. Companies can analyze vast quantities of data gathered in individuals to develop detailed profiles of individual behavior. Networking advances. Copying of data from one location to another and accessing personal data from remote locations are much easier. Lastly is the mobile device growth impact. Uh, individual cell phones may be tracked without user consent or knowledge. Uh, advances in data analysis technique. This is uh, non-obvious non relationship awareness or NORA. It is a new data analysis technique which can take information about people from many disparate sources such as employment, applications, telephone records, customer listings, and wanted lists, and correlate relationships to find obscure hidden connections that might help identify criminal or terrorists. Basic concepts, uh, in responsibility, accountability, and liability. Uh, individuals who are accountable for the results of their actions make ethical decisions. Responsibility means accepting the potential costs, duties, and obligations for decisions. Accountability is a mechanism for identifying responsible parties, while liability permits individuals to recover damages done to them, and due process considered as laws which are well known and understood with an ability to appeal to higher authorities. Ethical analysis, it's a uh, five-step process. The first step is clearly identify and state the facts. Find out who, where, when, and how did what to whom. Uh, given information should be clarified so that facts aids in defining the solution. Getting the opposing parties in an ethical problem to agree on the facts also helps. Second step is specify the issue at hand and point out the higher order values at stake wherein political, social, and ethical challenges constantly make reference to higher ideals, such as freedom, privacy, property protection, and others. These are common assertions made by disputing parties. An ethical problem typically involves two polar opposite roles of roads of behavior that uphold honorable beliefs. Third process is list the parties involved. Stakeholders or participants in the game who are invested in the situation have interest in the result and typically have strong opinions. They are present in every ethical, so, social, political issue. Fourth process is list the choices you can make that are reasonable. It's possible that no alternative will fulfill every interest, but some options perform better than others. The last step is determine any possible repercussions of your choices. Although may be morally sound, certain decisions can be terrible from other perspective. Other options might be effective in one situation but fail in another, comparable situations. Always consider what if I regularly choose this option over time. Candidates' uh, codes of ethics. First is a golden rule. Do, do unto others as you would have them unto you. Second is Immanuel Kant's categorical imperative. If an action is not right for everyone to take, it is not right for anyone. Third is Descartes' principle of change or slippery slope rule. It is uh, If an action cannot be taken repeatedly, it is not right to take at all. Fourth is utilitarian principle, that's take the action that achieves the higher or greater value. Then risk aversion principle is take the action that produces the least harm or potential cost. Lastly is ethical or no free lunch rule, which assume that virtually all tangible and tangible objects are owned by someone unless there is a specific declaration otherwise. The codes for conduct of Codes of conduct for professionals. With unique claims to expertise, 
wisdom and respect groups of people identify as professionals have distinct responsibilities and rights. These are the American Medical Association, American Bar Association, Association for Computing Machinery. By establishing entrance requirements and competence, these professional organizations assume responsibility for the partial regulation of their respective professions by signing codes of ethics, professions pledge to govern themselves in society's best interest. Real-world ethical dilemmas. It is one set of interests pitted against another. For example, our monitoring employees. This is by maximizing productivity of workers versus non-related activities. Or, and uh, Facebook, which tracks its users before selling the data to advertisers and app developers. Information rights, freedom, and privacy, the age in the age of internet. Privacy, a uh, claim of individuals to be left alone, free from surveillance or interference from other individuals, organizations, or state. Claim to be able to control information about yourself. In the UNES United States, privacy protected by the First Amendment, which is freedom of speech and association, the Fourth Amendment, a reasonable search and seizure, Additional federal statutes such as Privacy Act of 1974. And then the Fair Information Practices are set of principles governing the collection and use of information. These are used by COPA and HIPAA, which drive the changes in privacy legislation. The Federal Trade Commission's Fair Information Practice Principles are guidelines that represent widely accepted concepts concerning fair information practice. First is notice and awareness. Consumers should be given notice of an entity's information practices before any personal information is collected from them. This requires that company explicitly notify some or all of the following. Identification of the entity collecting the data, identification of the uses to which the data will be put, identification of any potential recipients of the data, the nature of the data collected, and the means by which it is collected, whether the provisions of the requested data is voluntarily required, lastly is the steps taken by the data collector to ensure the confidentiality, integrity, and quality of the data. Choice or consent. Choice and consent in an online information gathering sense means giving consumers options to control how their data is used. Specifically, choice relates to the secondary uses of information beyond the immediate needs of the information collector to complete the consumer's transaction. The two typical types of choice models are opt-in or opt-out. The opt-in method requires that consumers affirmatively give permission for their information to be used for other purposes Without the consumer taking these affirmative steps in an opt-in system, the information gatherer assumes that it cannot use the information for any other purpose. The opt-out method requires consumer to affirmatively decline permission for other uses. Without the consumer taking these aff affirmative steps in an opt-out system, the information gatherer assumes that it can use the consumer's information for other purposes. Each of these systems can be designed to allow an individual consumer to tailor the information gatherers use of the information to fit their preferences by checking boxes to grant or deny permission for specific purposes rather than using a simple all or nothing method. Third is access participation. Access as defined in the fair information practice principle includes not only a consumer's ability to view the data collected, but also to verify and contest its accuracy. This access must be inexpensive and timely in order to be useful to the consumer. Fourth is integrity and security. Information collectors should ensure that the data they collect is accurate and secure. They can improve the integrity of the data by cross-referencing it with only reputable databases and by providing access for the consumer to verify it. 
Information collectors can keep their data secure by protecting against both internal and external security threats. They can limit access with their company to only necessary employees to protect against internal threats, and they can use encryption and other computer-based security systems to stop outside threats. Enforcement. In order to ensure that companies follow the fair information practice principles, this there must be enforcement measures. The FTC identified three types of enforcement measures. Re Self-regulation by the information collectors on an appointed reg regulatory body. Private remedies that give, give civil causes of action for individuals whose information has been misused to shoot violators. And government enforcement that can include civil and criminal penalties levied by the government. The European Directives on Data Protection. This requires companies to inform people when they collect information about them and disclose how it will be stored in use. It also requires informed consent of the customer. The European Union member nation cannot transfer personal data to countries with no similar privacy protection. The U.S. Department of Commerce designed a safe harbor framework, which is a self-regulating policy to meet objectives of government legislation without involving government regulation enforcement. The challenges to privacy on the internet. Cookies. Uh, it's a tiny files downloaded by website to visitors' star drive to help identify visitors' browsers and track visits to site. These allow websites to develop profiles on visitors. How to cookies identify web visitors? First is the web server reads the user's web browser and determines the operating system, browser name, version number, internet address, and other information. Second, it's a server transmit a tiny text file with user identification information called the cookie, which a user's browser receives and stores on the user's computer. Third is when the user use you turns to the website, the server requests the contents of the any cookie it deposited previously in the user's computer. Lastly, the web server reads the cookie, identifies the visitors, and calls up data on the user. Other challenges to privacy on the internet are web beacons. These are called tiny graphics embedded in emails and web pages. This is also monitor who is reading email messages or visiting site. Spyware is a surreptitiously installed on user's computer. May transmit user's keystroke or display unwanted ads. Google services and behavioral targeting. Uh, the United States allows businesses to gather transaction information and use this for other marketing purposes. Other challenges are opt-out versus opt-in model and online Industry promotes self-regulation over privacy leg legislation. It's a, it is a complex, ambiguous privacy statements and an opt-out model selected over opt-in and online seals of privacy principles. Technical solutions. Solutions include email encryption, anonymity tools, anti-spyware tools. The technical solutions have failed to protect users from being tracked from on one site to another. Just browser features, we need a private browsing and do not track options. Uh, the next part will be discussed by Ms. Mary Grace Hermano. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.